How's that three four? Is she five nine? Yeah, is there five nine? No, there's a two nine. I would say I've kind of been aware in the background of that mastery for quite a long time, now you know, talking about Singapore maths and Shanghai maths and that kind of thing. Um, but really, in terms of this school, it's an initiative that was brought to us um, by a new senior leader that we employed, uh, Natasha Corrigan. Initially, from my perspective, it was to encourage somebody who had a vision to turn things around at, at the school. Uh, maths had been a, a weakness you know, for quite a while. And um, we've seen dramatic results change for the best um, since, since trying this new method and, and encouraging our teachers in this way. Could you start off by giving us a bit of background about uh, the school here and a bit of background on you two as well and how you come to be at the school, please? Do you want to start, Natasha? <laughs> yeah. So um, I used to work at a school, High Achieving. It was one of the first schools where the head of department was in cohort one of the mastery specialists, so she went to Shanghai um, and had an amazing time and came back to our department and just got the whole department really involved into teaching mastery and using some of the lessons that she had seen over there and ideas and ways of teaching. And we got involved with it through that and so got really engaged with it. And then I moved to this school two years ago um, and when I started here, it was something that I 100% wanted to bring with me because we were seeing better engagement from students, better consistency in department and just, you know, just, I was really impressed with the responses from all students, so. And was there a need in this school for, for a bit of a turnaround in maths? Yeah, so when I started, the, um, the results in maths were, were not very good and there was a change that needed to happen. So, and that was one of the things I wanted to do, is think of a long-term goal, so not just let's try and fix year 11 because that's not going to be you're not going to be able to maintain that so by starting with year seven and improving that hopefully as we move through those students will get a much better deal that doesn't mean we haven't done stuff with year 11 of course it just means that we're thinking about the long-term goals and how we can improve maths for every child at every level and not trying to fix something when maybe it's gone wrong not necessarily saying it's just at this school but you know, lots of things have happened before in that child's maths experience that could have had a negative impact on their understanding. And you joined the school a little later, is that right, Phil? Yes, yeah, so I was at the same school as uh, Natasha. Um, so again, when uh, our head of department came back from Shanghai and we started to incorporate some of the ideas into lessons, I mean, we were a very innovative school. And I was just really excited about the impact that it was having on the pupils and we then started to do a lot of work on the curriculum planning um, and implementing again the um, Shanghai teaching but taking the ideas that would work within what we felt that was right for our school um, and developing the teachers, uh, lessons, working collaboratively and so on. And then I was then hearing about the work that then Natasha was doing at this school and I was really excited about you know the opportunities that were going to be here, about really you know, making a massive change in difference to the uh, people's outcomes. Um, and I was also convinced that the approach, that given that it was the results that were here, well, the, the cohort, uh, the demographic, is very different to the school that I was um, before. But what I was really pleased about with the mastery is that with lower attaining, middle attaining pupils, that I was seeing how much impact it was having on them, not just with the higher attaining ones, but the rigour of like, you know, the, the maths that we're doing. So I started here and we then started to incorporate and, and, and start to build and develop a lot of the things that we've been doing in the previous school. Right, okay, so so you came here, uh, a lower attaining school, um, a need for a change in maths and, and you chose to implement teaching for mastery. So where on earth did you start? How did you know where to start? <laughs> well, we had previously been following uh, the white rose schemes of work and that was one of the This was at the previous things. school here? Yes, so I think it was a mix of that and another scheme but we knew about them and we were using parts of that and so that was one of the things that we wanted to introduce here 
because we liked the way the, the lessons flowed and the topics um, and with that um, I was able to become a go on the mastery specialist program so when I was successful with that that has really helped us because it has given us opportunities to have planning days to train staff to you know have time to go and observe other teachers and just really give us you know it takes a lot of time to put something like this in place and that's always something as teachers you never have enough of so by having that mastery specialist support with the funding I really don't think we would have been able to have as much of an impact so quickly if we didn't have that we would still have been trying to do it um, but I think it would have taken us a lot longer I can um, not saying we're anywhere near finished however where we are now considering it's been two years in total you know I think it's quite amazing the changes we've had in the buy-in from staff and the so did you response. start with year seven? Yeah. Right. Okay. Start with year seven. So the current year eights have followed that scheme in year seven and year eight. So then I started a year after. So Natasha had already uh, started to sow the seeds of mastery and already showing the staff uh, mastery lessons, approaches, the themes, as well as um, some of the teachers using some of the materials. Not all staff using at this stage. Uh, I then wanted to then. Um, to bring on board the teachers as well so initially one of the first things that I wanted to do was to make sure that the teachers could see again mastery lessons being taught so I, I was bringing them into the classroom to observe and to see the impact that it was having on the pupils to see the buy-in to see how the behavior was to see the enthusiasm so then from that we were then looking at um, how we'll get more buy-in from the teachers and one of the things that again we did at the other school uh, that were from was where we did joint planning and observations of planning the same lessons together, teaching the same lessons, but videoing them using iris. And then what we identified was that whilst we planned the same lessons and taught the same lessons, we still came up kept our own identity of who we are. We were still ourselves, we were still our own teachers. So it wasn't that we were then expecting teachers, whilst we had this model of mastery, we weren't expecting teachers to then be like automatons. You could still be you. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was really important, that message, to then get that buy-in from the staff. So then we started to do more work on the key stage three of then implementing and designing the lessons and embedding that into um, the scheme. Alongside of that, we also started to then plan key stage four lessons and include those into the schemes of work, but it wasn't to say in terms of all teachers, okay, now start using all of these, that's what we were doing for years seven and eight, but for year 10, 11, we'll stay in, okay, that's going to be the longer term plan, but at the moment, we're building towards that. We also have encouraged staff to use essences and ideas from the mastery approach within yeah. their 10 and 11 lessons. And right. I do know from doing lots of learning walks that people are still using variation in the right way, fluency, having those depth <coughs> questions as well. It just might not be um, we're all teaching from the same original lesson there's a bit more freedom. I also wanted to say as well with the what you were saying about key stage three and the lesson study that we did at our previous school that here because we don't have the video option what we've done to um, create a similar um, similar thing here is that we've had with the mastery fund funding that we've had we had a day of planning in a three of staff and we would spend a, the day planning, using the S-plan, and also going back to what you said about Key Stage 3 um, lesson study idea that we um, did at our previous school, how we've implemented that here is that we've looked within the department of who are becoming experts in the mastery teaching and planning, and we've um, used the money to have days of timetable to really plan a unit of work and spend the time putting all of our ideas on the paper um, doing everything, all the questions bouncing off each other then, then we've gone away and we've put the lesson together, which is really not difficult when you've got every question you want on the page and every resource you want to use in that lesson. Um, and then we've taught the lessons and we've observed each other teaching the same lessons with Year 8, we've done that yes, this year. And then we've then actually met um, and adapted the lessons a week after. So right there fresh, when you've seen how the students have responded to the lesson, that question didn't quite get the response we wanted or that wasn't very useful or actually I think 
that bit needed to come before that because they weren't quite quite ready for that yet. Um, and that's been that's sort of come at the end of this year, and I think that's something that next year we really want to do a lot more of because I feel like sometimes when we've taught the previous lessons, you never quite have enough time to go back and make those changes that you know for next year, mm. and then you're going to forget or you might you have to do it again. Whereas actually doing that has really helped to go. I actually feel like this lesson is really great now. Obviously, we can we'll always want to change stuff as we go on. It's also yeah, it's, it's been trying to get that. Uh, critical mass and excitement, enthusiasm, and just to see again, and to be able to demonstrate and show that the impact that it's having to the pupils, and then that brings in more people, brings in more people. And then what I've been really excited about is then are the teachers that then you think are, you know, are they buying into, are they buying into it? And then you then start seeing lessons that they're then putting up onto the share drive, where they're incorporating these ideas, they're going away, they're planning it, and then you're saying, fantastic, let's use those structures now for the key stage four for when we're doing the um, development of the scheme next year. It's then, it's having its own momentum now. Right. But yeah, I would completely agree that by bringing in the rest of the department as we've built up through the year has really helped them, I think, um, but also us and the whole department. It's not then just us trying to frantically plan these lessons because actually, you know, you need all the experts, you need three or four people to be able to bounce ideas off, mm. you know, it's not one person that yeah. should take responsibility for it. Okay, so if I was to come into one of your lessons today, what would I see that I might not have seen in a lesson here two years ago? Or, or uh, how would it feel different? What would it look like? For one thing I would say is that if you were walking around doing a learning walk through your seven lessons, you would see everyone teaching the same, not the same, it might not be the exact same lesson, but we would all be doing the same topic, we would all be using the same key core questions, we would all be using methods, using whiteboards, lots of AFL, um, lots of opportunities for students to make mistakes, but also lots of discussion. Um, but that's that was quite a big change because I'm sure in many schools there's lots of teachers planning all individual lessons, um, and so you haven't got that consistency. Mm. You know, a student then goes to a different teacher next year and they've been taught a different method of how, I don't know, how you want to multiply fractions, for example. And um, that can't be good for a child to go through five <laughs> possible different teachers or could be even more than that, you know, with um, potential maths teachers. So, yeah, I think that could be, you know, it could be really detrimental to their understanding, so having everyone on the same page is amazing. Within a lesson, I like feel okay. I think, I think what you will see is that you will see that there's one key concept being taught in a lesson. You will see that there's um, really well thought out variation in questions and the questioning approach by the teacher. Uh, it would be that be a massive difference as well as how the, the teachers are responding to mm -hmm. um, what they're seeing in the classroom. Okay. Um, so what about the impact on students? Would you, what would you say the impact's been on them in terms of their learning? So I just heard yesterday actually that um, so we bought into GEO assessment which is a national Key Stage 3 um, assessment and we I haven't proper, we've only, they've only done the test last week but Year 7 have made more than expected progress from what I've heard back so far in the year so and we don't know what the test is we don't teach to the test it's just they're doing a maths test um, at a national level and yeah there has been improvement obviously i need to look into that data more once i get that i should be able to get that today so yeah, yeah and our, our internal data was looking at that and i was waiting for that data to come out so our internal data what was really promising was it was looking at lower attaining pupils middle attaining pupils SEND, mm. premium they are moving towards being middle attaining pupils. There was a trajectory that you could see. Yes, there was still a handful of pupils that weren't making the expected level of progress. But in terms of you were seeing some movement, which was phenomenal. And you can see this in the classroom. You can see this, that the engagement of the pupils, you can see that the, 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 the level of their language that they're using, how robust, the, you know, with, with, with the, the mastery approach, that they're thriving. And you know, it's just been really exciting to see and our data is showing that. And what I'm really pleased about is to hear that, well, okay, whilst it's not a GCSE or Key Stage uh, 2, 
uh, national test. These are benchmarks against thousands of pupils, so that's mm -hmm. really interesting to see that, that that change is having an impact. And you're feeling it in the classroom as well as looking at the data? Yeah, and mm -hmm. also to hear what pupils are saying, how they're communicating, what they're saying about maths, their favourite subjects, you know, what we're hearing about this again is, is really exciting. And, and what the teachers say? Well, the teachers, again, when we're having our department meetings, the questions that we're asking, they're loving it, you know, what they're hearing about, the what the pupils are saying. How we delve into questions and just, you know, oh, we heard these people say this. Oh, we've, I've never, be, never before would have thought of teaching it this way. And the pupils are loving it. You know, these responses that we're getting, it's just like, there's nothing that's coming back that's going, I don't know. do that. <laughs> it's just, everything is just all going in. A positive, brilliant direction. Okay. And we do have in our department recently as well. Um, lots of the department will share the lessons they've designed within their groups, um, and we. That's been really helpful because we talk really like, well, why is that question there, or, and what language is it we're going to expect of all of the students? And I do think you mentioned that, but that has been massive. The change in the language that Year Sevens, Year Eights are using, that, you know, I'd never really seen students use before and you know just not not going oh no we won't teach them that word you know because why not yeah. and again, I was they're just reading, fine they're great and I was just reading about the education down from uh, literacy uh, material that's coming out today and again reading that and seeing what it's gone there it's going yeah it mirrors exactly again what, what the mastery is all about I would just say that generally when you are observing maths lessons uh, I mean for instance yesterday I was in a year nine maths lesson where they're talking about trigonometry in a way that I've never seen year nines talk about trigonometry. A lot of kids in the room, um, really everybody accessing it to quite a detailed uh, level, uh, which is really impressive. Um, and then we're just talking about maths in a different way. There's a confidence about the teaching that's going on. Um, students are enjoying it. It's, it's not a taboo subject. It's not something that the children are afraid of. They're really into it. It's, it's probably one of our strongest performer subjects at the moment. Mm. Yeah. And. Um and would you say there's any particular groups of pupils that you think have benefited from it, or would you say completely across the board? Uh, I would say looking at our data, um, I'd say just two things are, are changing rapidly. The first is that those low prioritizing students that just were not achieving in maths, um, we're bringing them on side now. Um, so we're definitely seeing that kind of rate of progress there. Uh, and then. You know, what's, I, what I find particularly encouraging is that um, the high priority students are doing exceptionally well. Right. Um, but, you know, my, my biggest thing uh, around Maths Mastery is just the impact it's had on our teachers. It's allowing us to recruit um, people that are interested in the programme, they want to come and work here. Um, it's, it's helping us to retain maths teachers, which is not that easy in the current climate. Um, so I'd say from my perspective as a head teacher, the, the, the impact on, on, on the maths team uh, has been the most positive. How do you manage the particularly high attaining students? So again, this is something where if there was one biggest question that I got from the teachers is, are we pushing the kids enough? The higher attaining pupils, are they being pushed? And then when you look at the type of questions that, and how they're structured, and then you start to then hear how the higher attaining pupils are responding to it and the ideas that they come back with, it answers that question. Right. So you start to have pupils that are starting to ask questions about things because you're taking it to a base level. Let's say you're doing indices, they're asking questions that you wouldn't necessarily be starting to look at in tomato. But yet they're questioning about this. Why that? Why this? How about that? Oh, I can see that now. I can see that. We can see this. And it's a, it's a higher order of thinking. There, yeah. It's a higher order of thinking. So then you've got pupils that are just, let's say, not just, but they are doing the calculation. And you've got another set of pupils that are going, how about this? What about that? What about that? We can now do this, can't we? We can now do this. And it's giving them empowerment. And I guess the whole class are also hearing that stuff going yeah. on. Just help. So then, now that the other teachers are starting to see that and witnessing that for themselves, that's yeah. starting to then... They're going, yeah, I can yeah. see how that pushes them. I can see how that that's really bringing them on as well. Right. And the lower attainers, are they keeping up? So the lower attaining, again, we've got, uh, I'll split that into two groups. So we've got our nurture group for, the, for um, say, the pupils that 
still struggling with their number one. So where we year, so year seven, year eight, year right. nine. Okay. So where we so let's say we started with the topic and we started at that level. If there's pupils that will have difficulty accessing it at that level, then they'll be in the nurture group. So we'll then and I'll talk a little bit more separately about that in a moment. So where we've got that start that level for the lower ten pupils, they get on board there. And then we lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it. And yeah, they're coming with us. Really? They're coming with us. And then there's times when then through our um, responsive feedback, we're looking at, okay, let's take a step back again. Let's move. Back I do move. think, though, if there is one thing that we could work on, I do think that's it. From going into some lessons, I do. I completely agree that they are coming with us, but they do need more support. And it's, you know, if you read a lot about the mastery and what you could do, of the intervention, you know, straight after lesson, um, that we could try, if we could embed that, I think that would help bring them more of us. Uh, so yeah. I do think there are some who, possibly in lessons, you know, might struggle at points, and I think that takes quite a skill as a teacher, and you know, you're trying to do, push the top, etc. So I do appreciate that, and I think if there's, yeah, I would say that's something that next year I really want us to work on, is making sure that they're staying with us the whole way. Yeah, and again, I think it's, 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 you look at Shanghai, where they'll have the maths lesson, the teacher will then have, have a look at the work, and then that pupil will then be um, brought out of a class straight away that day to then mm -hmm. intervene. So, yeah, in an ideal world, that would be great, but we've got to look at things that we can do within our confines and constraints. But, yeah, that is definitely something that we um, want to improve upon. Right. Um, as well as with, and this is where I go back to the nurture class, as well as we want to do more work with where with the, with the abstract pictorial concrete so we're using a lot more manipulatives so that again where we need that support we need to then take it back to that to that stage so that then they can then um, build those concrete ideas and concepts so then they can then move on to the next stage so that's something again that we're going to be building in much much more into the curriculum and lessons so um, let me ask you about uh, structural changes first of all at the department level so um, when you first arrived, Natasha, you were head of department, weren't you? And now Phil's head of department. Um, did you change the scheme of work at all? Yes. So initially, um, initially we changed the Key Stage 4 scheme of work um, based on outcome response. Um, but when I changed the Key Stage 3 scheme of work, it took a little bit longer. So when I first started in the first year, we didn't change it initially, but we did start teaching some of the lessons within their scheme of work. So when we were teaching fractions, um, I would share the lessons and how I'd like them to teach the lessons and get them to sort of just use them and have a go. Um, and then as it got throughout that first year, we then moved over onto White Rose scheme of work. By that point, lots of the staff were already starting to teach some of the lessons already. So it didn't feel like a huge change with the Key Stage 3 straight away, as much as maybe the Key Stage 4 scheme of work change did. So what about uh, groupings? Are you setted here or mixed attainment or how does it work? So currently now, in Year 7, we've got mixed attainment sets. Year 8 through to 11 is still set. However, next year, Year 7 and 8 will both be mixed attainment. What was really important for me was at the beginning, was getting the mastery teaching right. Is getting the buy-in from staff, getting everyone to a level where they could feel confident teaching a mastery lesson where they can stretch the top and support the bottom. And I think without that, first of all, it would have been silly to go in mixed attainment because I feel like um, some people would not feel confident in doing that, but also they might end up just teaching to the middle, which mm -hmm. this school has been previously that's what the outcomes say that we do. Right. Well, not we do, but I think, yeah. um, and now I feel completely confident with the year seven mixed attainment sets from going around seeing the teachers, talking to the teachers, that we are in a position where now we can keep that going. Right, right, okay. Um, what, have you um, had to change the timetable at all uh, in terms of the number of hours they get, or is that the same as it was? No, the timetable has stayed the same. We've changed a little bit about when lessons are. We have a, we want a lot more singles. We have quite right. a few doubles in our timetable. Um, so we're 
getting more next year and obviously going forward we want even more of those. It's not always, you can't always get everything you want on the timetable. Um, but... Are your lessons an hour? So each lesson is 50 minutes, right. but then sometimes you have a double, which is 100. And in maths we don't really like those, we feel like that's too long. Yeah. So we have a lot less of those next year, which is good. Um, anything else? Because again, if you're looking at from the mastery approach, I feel that um, the, the 100 minute lesson doesn't necessarily facilitate that. Yeah, so if you have a 100 minute lesson, would you then split that into two and basically do two lessons? No. Or do you try and do one, so one you would do you, you, Yeah, you'll go for a key point and then you'll do other activities, whether it's using, for instance, the ninja books that we use, whether we're looking at um, some That's assessment it. that we're looking at for some post or pre-tests and so on. Right, okay. For like an hour would be ideal. <laughs> and how about resources? Have you had to buy lots of new resources in terms of manipulatives and that sort of thing, or did they already exist at school? We've got some, but we've bought more, invested mm. more. And again, through the uh, mastery funding, we've also uh, purchased um, a number of the Collins Shanghai books. Because within there, um, whilst they're practice books, they offer some really in useful questions that can be actually put into the core lessons. So we use them to help us to um, plan, plan the lessons. So they were used as well. Right, okay, thank you. Um, and now thinking about the sort of structural changes that might be a bit more um, leadership um, responsibility, I'm thinking about um, how did you manage releasing teachers to do co-planning? You've talked about that a little bit. Um, yes, I think, firstly, I am on the senior leadership team which has helped to get buy-in from above but equally I think that the outlining of the programme and knowing all of the help and support we were going to get um, it was not it was a no-brainer for our head to support this and I did make it very clear in that first meeting that within signing us up for this we will have to have I'll have to be out for some training we'll have to have staff out equally and we'll also have to do some co-planning etc because there's no point saying you're going to do something if you don't if you're then not able to do it right. because that would yeah. just be really really upsetting and so what um and i think what we've done is we've used so where the mastery funding gives you money to spend on um, co-planning etc as you wish to use it we have brought in so some of our part-time staff have worked on their days off and got paid for the day so they might do a co-planning day where actually they're not losing any lessons mm -hmm. so that's been really useful and um, we've also we have had bought in supplies so we've got a supply maths teacher who has covered for some of our lessons before so we've got her in so we can trust her and we know that you know if she's teaching my timetable for the day I'm okay you know it's not like they're just losing out on all maths teaching so that's been really useful um, we've also paid some of our part-time staff to come in and teach timetables while other people are out. So actually, the impact on the losing of lessons for, say, myself, Phil, other members of staff, hasn't been as much as you might think when you first see, oh my gosh, they're going to be out for this many days. Right. Um, if you use the money cleverly. If you use the money yeah. cleverly. Also, we've, you know, we've been, you know, we never took a day during year 11 teaching time or during a time of year where it's, you know, we've been careful about when we choose those days. So, you know, for me, it will be when I have my least lessons. Right. Um, I just want to go back to um, uh, another point earlier as well. And it's just, I think that when I first looked at joining the school, I think that it was really important that when I uh, met the head, that he, we had full commitment from the head that you know, we had autonomy, that he believed and bought into our approach, mm -hmm. that you know, that there was a certain amount that there was trust there, that we were like, you know, we we're, we're, we're gonna go on this, we've got that vision, we're gonna put this forward and you're gonna be there to support us. And I was completely convinced that that was gonna be the case and that's what's been uh, seen since I've joined. So it's been that has been really important that from that senior management right to the top has been buy-in, trust, and autonomy from that point of view to go, right, you do it and get it done. But it's also not just about him saying, yeah, get on with it, is it? He's also, he's also had to authorise the days off and the, and the time out and the getting supply and that sort of thing, so it's a bit more um, 
proactive as well. There, yeah, they need to get said, it's trust, you trust to, the trust. To, yeah. to decide what to, to yeah. say, yeah, we need this. And then to agree it, I yeah. suppose. Uh, we, we kind of take a risk and slightly overstaff on that. Um, so we, we do mitigate against that happening. Um, but I think the investment is definitely worth it. I mean, we teach 190 days in a year. So um, investing in, 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 you know, teachers that are, you know, math teachers, good math teachers these days are hard to find. And, and you know, we really do need to invest in them uh, if we're going to build something that's sustainable, something that we can keep doing. So for me, it's, it's a no-brainer that you, that you would invest that time. I'd just really like to end off by, um, Phil, if you'd like to say, if the, let's imagine there might be another head of department watching this video, and what would you say to him or her? Maybe they're dithering about whether they want to take on teaching for mastery, they're not sure if they can make the commitment, what would you say? I would probably, first of all, say, if, if you, depends on where you're at with mastery, if, have you met the, um, the hub school, have you um, taught to the first uh, phase teachers and so on, where, where you're at with it. But um, I would say that you know the difference and the impact that we're seeing, that the you know the teachers and how they come on board. I was recently at um, a course with a number of heads of departments, and it was it was interesting to hear how they're struggling bringing on board their department to come a, along with a, a like a, a joint vision, and this allows you to have that vision to go let's let's go down this road. It does work. It is going to be successful and bring everyone together. And mm -hmm. I think that that you know is really helpful in that respect. Okay, and I mean, not every school can can manage to get onto the mastery specialist program, or indeed a, has the capacity to allow someone to do it. And that's obviously given you quite a bit of wriggle room with funding and that sort of thing. Do you think so? If the school couldn't get onto the mastery specialist program, but maybe they could get onto the teaching for mastery programme where their school works with a mastery specialist. Do you think, can you see that working? I would say, I'd say contact the hub. Yeah. Um, there are different um, avenues, there's different things that are available. Um, so I would always say speak to them and see what you know they can offer and what support that they can put in place for you. Yeah, and there is funding through the teaching for mastery yeah. programme as well, and a lot of support. I definitely think that in response to that, that yeah, if you've got a mastery specialist helping you who's gone through things that we've gone through, then I can't see how we wouldn't be able to help share and work with that school to help them on their journey. Mm. And that's what you'll be doing next year, isn't it? Yeah. Working with schools in the area. Yeah. So obviously not all the teachers that are watching are going to be in this area, so um, there are mastery specialists all over the country, but Natasha, what would you say to other senior leaders um, about teaching for mastery? in terms of supporting their, their maths departments? I would say talk to the head of department, if the, if the head of department is the person that wants to put it in. Find out some information about mastery teaching so that when they are doing learning works, etc., they know what to expect and the difference from maybe what they want to see or, you know, you really do need them to understand what master, teaching for mastery is. Otherwise, I feel like that could then create some issues. So, you know, whether you're on the senior leadership team or you can have a meeting with the right person, your line manager, etc., to really explain what's going on. And there's lots of um, documentation that you can use in those meetings with typical questions and answers. I know that that's been put together by the master specialist. Yeah. And that's really helpful because I'm sure there are lots of questions that a senior leadership team would have, but you do need their buy in. I cannot. I've spoken to a lot of mastery specialists where they haven't got complete support and I'm not sure exactly what's gone wrong, but I think if you don't, you know, at the beginning when you do it, you do have to have that buy-in because mm -hmm. they have to sign, sign it off. So it's interesting that then they haven't quite bought in. Or I feel like that's, they haven't really understood mm -hmm. what the difference will be. And mm -hmm. I think that's really key. But... You know, if they're really worried, talk to a senior leadership in a team in a school where it is happening, yeah. and get them to commit to you. I'm happy to talk but it to sounds them. also like you're saying that not only is it important to have senior leadership buy-in, but it's no good senior leadership saying right, this is what we're doing in maths, unless you've got maths department buy-in as well from yeah. the head of department. So the yeah, working closely together, like yes. you two, doing sounds like it's and critical. And that's a really good point actually, because I know that lots of master specialists aren't the head of department. Right. So it can be. 
not that you have to be master specialist, but it could be some people within a team are teaching mastery, but maybe the head of department isn't, or, and that I also feel, I feel like everything, you need to have a shared vision in the department of what you want, and if it is that you want to teach for mastery, you want everyone to be on, you want everyone to be going towards that same goal, otherwise, well, it's going to be that's, that's, That sounds like any change in school, yes. I suppose, yeah. really, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank, Thank you. you.